you. Right. This is our final paper, paper review. But uh, once again, we should reflect on the fact that uh, all the front pages, bar the FT, uh, dominated, uh, and the Star as well, I think, but uh, the Lucy Letby trial obviously uh, getting a lot of attention on the newspaper front pages. So let's look at a couple that we haven't visited before. And Nikki, yeah. you wanted to pick out the, the Sun this time around, um, and they've got a rather chilling photograph on their front page. Yes, they do. So they have a picture of Lucy Letby at a hen party back in 2015. And apparently this was um, the day before she murdered the first baby. Um, that was her first victim. I mean, you know, she just looks like any other girl at a hen party on a weekend with friends. There's nothing remarkable or that would give any clue as to what she was to go on and do. And I suppose when you look at this picture, you think, what on earth was going through her mind on that day? I mean, in some of the insides, one of the theories that is posited about her motives is that she worried she wouldn't be married and have her own children. And so you, you sort of wonder, and maybe it's an extrapolation to think, well, maybe you go on a hen party and you start to think about your own future and then that's, that's a trick, you know, that triggers a sequence of thoughts, which obviously for her were very dark. And then, you know, obviously this horrific behaviour. But it, it, none of it really makes sense, you know. No. We, you can try and put two and two together and sort of come up with some kind of conclusion, but it doesn't make sense about why she would do it. And because she continually denied that she'd done it, yeah, that of she course. appeared in court continuing to deny it, we can only speculate about motive. And, and there yeah. are uh, pages of the newspapers who are trying to, to work out why yeah. she, she would have done it. Yeah. Um, and, it and it's interesting, isn't it, seeing a photograph like that, a lot of the coverage also talks about her being quite an average person mm. that didn't attract too much suspicion, except for amongst some of her colleagues who raise those suspicions, and that is put on the front page of the Daily Telegraph yeah. about how warnings were ignored. Yeah, well, uh, you know, seven clinicians raised the alarm uh, and said, this is really uh, not uh, a coincidence. You need to do something about it. Uh, and they were ignored to the extent that, uh, that several of the nurses said, you need to write an apology to Lucy Letby for accusing her of, of murder. And they said, you gotta be kidding. But they did, uh, because they were under pressure. Uh, and the wider point, uh, it seems to me, is about the culture change that needs to happen now within the NHS that actually rewards people who speak up uh, and actions their concerns rather than just logs them. It's not enough just to log them. You have to do something about it, and especially seven clinicians. Uh, it, you know, they, they called the police in two years after the first concern was raised. It's unbelievable. So culturally and systemically, the NHS has a big job to do. This, I, I doubt this is isolated just to this hospital. Well, well, that's interesting. And, and also, um, you, you mean in terms of the system, don't you? But yes. also, there's also the question of whether it's isolated to this hospital as far as she is concerned. Yes. And they are now looking at uh, 4,000 cases at hospitals yeah. where she's worked previously as well, yeah. uh, just to see whether there could be any uh, connection and she may have uh, committed other crimes. Yeah. Um, and let's just quickly have a look as well, shall we, Nikki, at um, The Sun. There's a double page spread here. Yeah. Uh, reflecting or focusing on the note that police found in her home. Yeah, so obviously, they uh, they went through all her possessions. They, you know, went through the garage, went through the house when she was arrested, and they found this what seems to be a very damning post-it note, which sort of details round about some of the things that she's done. There's this word hate circled, which you can see, and then at the bottom it says, "I am I I am evil. I did this," and so. It's a curious piece of evidence because obviously, actually, somebody writing something on a piece of paper isn't proof that they've then committed a crime. It might be, you know, evidence used to kind of work with other pieces of evidence if you have them. Uh, but, you know, it just seems kind of bizarre as well that maybe she would write these things down in, in, any, in any sense. Perhaps she was just so burdened by what she'd done, even though she obviously denied what she had done. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, just seeing those those words written very starkly out is, is quite chilling. It is chilling, and yeah. I think the police didn't consider it a smoking gun, but clearly it's, it's uh, very interesting evidence, uh, isn't it, as the speculation goes on as to what her motive actually was. Yeah. Uh, let's put that case to one side. There will be no doubt an, an awful lot of column inches written about it um, in the days and weeks ahead. Yep. But in the meantime, let's turn to happier issues. Yes. And, uh, let's talk about uh, the Women's World Cup. Yes. Because uh, we're in a state of nervous anticipation. Absolutely. Excited anticipation. Absolutely. This is, uh, I mean, there's, you know, there's talk about it if the 
uh, with England women's team win uh, against Spain, that there should be a national holiday declared, which personally I would support. I think even if they 100%. lose, it would be quite popular. <laughs> <laughs> How many times do we have a proposal for a national holiday yes, when exactly. something triumphant exactly. happens or is about to happen? But yes, yeah. absolutely. I, I mean, the sun came out at the moment. That would be a cause for celebration. Absolutely. The pub owners are very happy also about tomorrow's match because, of course, uh, you know, that's a great place on a big screen to watch this match. Um, I mean, we were talking earlier about wouldn't it be smart if there was a beer called Sweet Caroline, but who knows, maybe someone will launch such a, you know, short, uh, a short, small batch uh, microbrew. Um, but this is just a, a fantastic boost for brand Britain, really. Uh, even though it's England, I think the whole uh, of the United Kingdom must be uh, thrilled over the performance of Serena Weg Wegman and these women have done fantastic And you know job. all about branding as well, don't you? That's I my background, I was reading a really yeah. interesting um, article about how the, the brands are going to be falling over themselves to these women oh, yes. because they have such a great image. Totally. They, they play with such spirit, but Absolutely. also they're very wholesome. You know, Absolutely. They, they don't have some of the... Um, you know, the, the image issues that some of the men have, yes. for example. Yes. So they, they will personally do, while well, they continue their fight for equal pay, they yep. will also benefit, won't they? Absolutely. And, and there are already several brands knocking on their door uh, to say, we want to sponsor anything you touch yeah. because you are uh, sort of Midas, you know, anything to do with you. And to your point, uh, they represent, uh, you know, Honest competition. Uh, there's not a lot of the uh, some of the dirty play that you see in some <laughs> other sports. No. Which we don't need to mention right now. Uh, but yes, they are definitely held up as uh, examples of how to do it well. And yeah, will you be supporting England because America went out? <laughs> I know. I, yes. I, well, I'm a bit conflicted, aren't I, as a dual national? But I'm definitely supporting England. Yes. Good. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> 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 and you both be watching the Keegan. Yeah, well, I mean, I understand nothing about football, but I absolutely love what positive role models these women are yeah. for everyone, for everyone. Yeah. They just have so much grace with how they carry themselves and, and how they behave on and off the pitch. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, I just think it's wonderful to see them do so well. And, yeah. and as you say, Serena Wiegmann, clearly a, a very good leader. And, absolutely. Um, and... and uh, has it inspired them and kept them positive all the way through? Yeah, yeah. completely. And we, 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 you know, we hear so much about women in leadership roles, uh, you know, not being able to do certain things and held back by certain prejudices and all the rest of it. And you just don't see any of that at play here. Yeah. You just see women absolutely performing at their best. Yeah. It's just so positive. Yeah. yeah, let's hope they get the result they want <laughs> absolutely. that we all want for them. Um, anyway, lovely to see you both this morning. Uh, Nikki and Alison, thanks very much indeed. Thank and we'll you. see Thank you again you. soon. And uh, in the meantime, uh, let's just tell you that we've got all the top stories coming up in the next hour and we're live at the Countess of Chester Hospital, so don't go away.